Yes, ma'am. If that's the case, I am concerned about the exposure of the final order on appeal. If Mr. Vasquez has made an appearance into the case, requested an attorney, and now that attorney is not appearing for the final hearing, I, I feel compelled to request a stop and start in this hearing to make sure that that, that doesn't become an appellate issue in this case. Oh, your Mr. Vasquez did appear at the adversary. You're correct. All right, we've got. Um, I guess stop and starts. What we'll have to do. We've got a dismissal date of March second. Um, I want to stick around a while. My understanding from talking to Judge Baker and to Mr. Jackson, there's a good probability that this case that he's involved in this morning may settle. So I don't want to give up the ghost just yet. So I'm going to just take a break and I'll try to contact Judge Baker and see if they have started their case or whether they're still trying to settle it. So uh, I'll try to get a hold of her and then I'll be back to let everybody know where we're at. I do have someone on a phone line. Uh, Mr. Taylor, were you expecting your client who's incarcerated? Yes, my client is supposed to be appearing by telephone from the Pampa TDCJ unit. OK, let's, unit. let's get the phone line in. Mr. Pirtle's now with us. Hello. All right, this is Judge Graham. I bless someone in on the phone line. Uh, can you identify who you are, please? Uh, Matthew Jones. Okay, all right. So let me go ahead and call these cases, then we'll see where we're at. Here on a final hearing, Ms. Gutierrez is with us for the department. Mr. Ingram is with us representing the child. Mr. Taylor is with us representing the father, Mr. Jones, who has appeared by phone. Mr. Pirtle is with us representing the mother, Ms. Chavez, who is not with us, and she's not in the waiting room. Mr. Pirtle, were you expecting your client? Yes, Judge, I believe she's logging on. Okay. Your Honor, can we go ahead and let Paula Mears in as well? All right. I'll go ahead and call the other case, related case, Ms. Gutierrez for the department. Mr. Ingram's with us representing the child. Mr. Jackson represents the father, Jacob Vasquez. Mr. Jackson's in another trial. Mr. Vasquez is not with us, and he's not in the waiting room. Mr. Pirtle again represents the mother, Ms. Chavez. Vanessa, um, the judge left for a minute. He's going to come back. Okay. So Mr. what's going on with this court? Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Yes. Pirtle, you want to Excuse me. Let me talk, please. Mr. Pearl, you want to break out room with your client while we're waiting? Uh, yes, Judge. Okay. Okay, I'm still waiting to see if I can hear from Judge Baker to see whether or not Mr. Jackson's going to have to go in that case or whether he might be able to join us and we can proceed. So, All right. Uh, apparently, they have settled that case. They're getting ready to make an announcement. I told Judge Baker to have Mr. Jackson join us as soon as he can so that we can proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll be back as soon as we see Mr. Jackson in our waiting room. So I apologize for keeping everybody waiting, Your Honor. I thought that affidavit was going to be the trick. Okay, we're uh, we're just going to get started. Mr. Jackson, we've got your client is not in the waiting room and hasn't been in the waiting room. And I understand from the report to the court you sent, you've had no contact with him since being appointed. That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. All right, then. Uh, um, so just for the record, uh, Mr. Jackson has now joined us representing Jacob Vasquez. This case was set for 930. It's now 1040. Mr. Vasquez is not with us. Uh, the other parties are with us. Uh, including their attorneys. I think we've announced that earlier. So everyone is present so that we can proceed. Uh, we have, we've got another case at 1130 and uh, Ms. Taylor has to leave by 1130. So we'll go as close to 1130 as we can without having to call another witness and break in the middle of testimony. Then we'll recess and I've got some potential dates to come back and finish yeah, this I up. I should so. have Rodolfo Flores. He was, in there, he was in there earlier, but he's not in there now. Okay, let me attempt to contact him real quick. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to make an oral request for a motion for continuance. Based on what? My client would like more time to show sobriety. Uh, can't be done. This case has got a dismissal date of March 2nd. It's already been extended, so that motion will be denied. Your Honor, Rudy reported that he was in the waiting room, but it's not showing on our side. So I asked him to get out and come back in. Okay. And I lost somebody else. Now all I have is Lisa Galloway. So we lost another one too. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Rudy, who do you work for? I work for the Department of Family and Protective Services. And what do you do for them? I am an investigator. And Vanessa Chavez is the mother of both children. Is that correct? Correct. Who is the father of Matthew? 
That would be Matthew Jones. And who is the father of Antonio? That's going to be Jacob Vasquez. All righty. Um, that intake you received on August 17th of 2022, what were the intake allegations? The allegation was that uh, Antonio was born at the hospital and he had tested positive for cocaine and marijuana. Um, and I believe um, uh, um, opiates. Okay, and that was at his birth, is that correct? That, that is correct. Alrighty, and based on that intake, did you visit in the hospital on August 18th of 2022? I did. Okay, and while there, did you also request Vanessa Chavez to drug screen? I did. And did she refuse? She actually submitted to a UA, but she would refuse to do the hair strand. Okay. And was the infant Antonio suffering from feeding issues and rapid breathing when you saw him at the hospital on August 18th? That is correct. All righty. Your Honor, we offer petitioners exhibit number one. They are selected pages from the business records, the full business records on the child Antonio. Um, we did send out a 902 notice on that several months ago. No objection. No objection. All right. Petitioners one is admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. And on August 18th, 2022, did you also contact the sibling of Antonio, Matthew? I did. Who did he identify as residing at home with him? He indicated he was living with uh, mom, Vanessa, and with Jacob. Mm -hmm. And what did he say about Jacob that concerned you? He indicated that Jacob was very rude at home, and he um, stated that him and that Jacob and mom had actually had an incident of domestic violence where Jacob had struck mom, Vanessa. Okay. And what statements did Matthew take concerning weed, if any? Matthew also indicated that uh, that they were smoking weed uh, on a regular basis. And by they, are you referring to Vanessa and Jacob? Yes. Now, when you discussed um, the law enforcement with the child, uh, let me let me rephrase that question. I apologize. During your conversation with Matthew, did he say anything that concerned you regarding Vanessa asking him not to speak to police? Correct. So. Whenever I was speaking with him, uh, Matthew asked, <clears throat> Matthew saw me writing down some notes and um, he asked if, um, he indicated that mom Vanessa had told him that if he said everything that was happening at the house, that he would be removed from the family for telling about, for saying everything that was going on in the house. And did you also hear back from the hospital on August 18, 2022, that Antonio was suffering withdrawal symptoms? Yes, I did. On that same day, did you meet with Vanessa Vasquez? I'm sorry, Vanessa Chavez in her hospital room? Yes, I did. And what did she who did she indicate she was in a relationship with at that time? Vanessa indicated she was in a relationship with Jacob Vasquez. And where did she indicate this the father of Matthews? She indicated Matthew's father, who was also named Matthew, was incarcerated due to a pending murder charge. Okay. Did she also, or rather, what did she indicate about being on parole? Vanessa had indicated that she was um, on parole for arson. Now, in regards to drug use, did you confront Vanessa about possible drug use? I did. Okay. And did she deny using cocaine or experimenting with it? She she did not do any recent use of, of drugs, correct? She mentioned the last time she used any drugs was uh, years before. Did you also make contact with Jacob Vasquez by phone? I did. And did you inform him of the allegations? I did. Okay. And when you asked him about his criminal history, how did he respond? 
he indicated he was not cooperative. He just indicated that it, that uh, none of this was any of our business. Did he begin to curse at you as well? Correct. He was belligerent and was cursing at me. Did he also indicate or claim that he had no knowledge of Vanessa using drugs? Correct. He said he did not know that Vanessa was using drugs. Okay. And what did he state about his own marijuana use? He indicated he had a uh, prescription from um, out of state, I believe Oklahoma, um, for marijuana. And while discussing marijuana use, did he decide to end the call? Correct. That he, I asked him what he was using, what he was prescribed the marijuana for, and he um, told me it was none of my business and then ultimately terminated the call. Now, when you went back and spoke with Vanessa Chavez, um, was she cooperative? Vanessa was cooperative to a certain point, but not 100%. Can you explain that? Like when we asked her to submit to a drug test, she went for the drug test. We requested both a urinalysis and hair strand. She only provided the hair strand. I mean, I'm sorry. She only provided the urinalysis and not the hair strand. Okay. And the next day, did you make attempts to contact Vanessa again? Correct. When I was trying to contact her the following day to, to, to go drug screen for the department, she was not responding to phone calls or text messages. I had to get her mother uh, to contact her for me. And did she acknowledge receiving your texts? Uh, yes, she did. Okay. And following that conversation with Vanessa, did you again speak with Jacob Vasquez? I did. And <clears throat> what what did he make the call to you? While I was on the phone with Vanessa discussing the uh, missed text messages, um, I had received a couple of missed calls from Jacob. I called him back. And he was extremely irritated and yelling at me the whole time about not appreciating me uh, making Vanessa cry. Okay. And did he continue to shout throughout the call? Correct. I was I was telling him that I needed to speak with him as well as he needed to go drug screen, but he just continued to shout the entire time. And in that same conversation, did he state that Vanessa had postpartum depression? He did. And so on August 22nd, um, did you find out that Vanessa had refused to complete a hair follicle drug screening? I did. Okay. And did you ask her to reconsider? I did. I, I called Vanessa and asked her why she didn't submit to a drug, the uh, hair follicle. And um, she told me she wasn't going to. And I asked her if she would please reconsider. And she refused. And over this time period, was Antonio receiving medical care in the neonatal intensive care unit? Yes, he was. Now, on August 25th of 2022, um, did you attempt to set up a family team meeting to discuss alternatives to removal and a safety plan to keep the children safe? I did. And did Vanessa agree or refuse to comply or to cooperate with that family team meeting? V Vanessa refused to comply. Okay. Um, as far as reasonable efforts to review, to reasonable efforts to prevent removal, um, one of those would have included family-based safety services. Is that correct? That is correct. And that program would have connected the parents to services to address drug use and domestic violence. Is that correct? That is correct. However, that program can only be entered into if the parents are cooperative. Would you agree? That is correct. And at this point, did you consider both Vanessa and Jacob Vasquez uncooperative? That is correct. They were uncooperative. And did the department determine that the children needed to be removed to prevent immediate physical danger Yes, that, that was the department's determination. Okay. Now, where was the father of Matt during your investigation? 
Matthew Jones uh, was incarcerated during my investigation. Now, while you were working this investigation, did you discover extensive criminal history on both Vanessa Chavez and Jacob Vasquez? I did. As well as Matthew Bates? Correct. Okay. Your Honor, we now offer certified, I'm sorry, petitioners exhibits two. Um, I'll do them one by one. Petitioners exhibit two. It is certified criminal documents on Jacob Vasquez for possession of a controlled substance. Next. Offers petitioners exhibit number three, certified criminal documents on Vanessa Chavez for DWI with the child. And I next ask the court to take judicial notice that the child identified in that ident indictment is Matt. So noted. Thank you, Your Honor. The department next offers petitioners exhibit number four, certified criminal documents on Vanessa Chavez for DWI seconds. Thank you, Your Honor. The department next offers together petitioners exhibit five, five A and five B, certified criminal documents on, on Matthew Jones for robbery and theft of a firearm. Your Honor, the department next offers petitioners exhibits six and six A together. <laughs> Six and six A together. They are certified criminal documents on Matthew Jones for capital murder. Objections? No objection. No objection. No objection. Six and six A are admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. The department next offers petitioners exhibit number seven. I'm sorry. Let me see. The department next offers petitioners exhibit number seven in base only, and they are certified criminal documents on Matthew Jones for a burglary of a building. Really? Thank you, Your Honor. And the department next offers petitioner 7A, which is a motion in order to dismiss 7 um, on Matthew Jones. Thank you, Your Honor. We next offer petitioners Exhibit 8, which is the Amarillo Police Department incident report um, from the 2018 arrest of Vanessa Chavez that ties back to Exhibit 3. Now, Rudy, in looking at uh, the CPS history, did you consider Vanessa Chavez's CPS history or rather all the parents' CPS history and determining whether or not removal needed to occur? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Um, and in reviewing that history, <clears throat> you that the child tested positive for cocaine simultaneously as Vanessa Chavez. <clears throat> one case. Yes, that is correct. Your Honor, the, depart the department next offers petitioners exhibit 13, which is the positive hair follicle drug screen for cocaine from January 30th of 2022. In both cases. And this is on Vanessa Chavez? Yes, Your Honor. All right, objections? Uh, I'd object, Your Honor, based on hearsay. Is it a certified copy? Affidavit of business records, excuse me. Affidavit of business records is attached, so that objection will be overruled. If there's no other objections, Exhibit 13 is admitted. Your Honor, the department next offers petitioners Exhibit 14, Matthew Bayer follicle result, also from January 30th of 2020, positive for cocaine. I'm trying to keep up with you. And in general, Rudy, did the drug, did the CPS history for Jacob and Vanessa cover both domestic violence and drug use? Yes. And was there a prior FBSS case of Vanessa's in 2020? Yes, there was. And was that closed due to non-compliance? It was correct. Now, following the removal, did you meet with Matthew Jones in Potter County Jail on September 8th of 2022? I did. Okay. And what did he indicate about any drug use of Vanessa Chavez? He indicated Vanessa had a history of, of uh, abusing Xanax. He called it bars and later clarified that he was referring to the uh, prescription medicine uh, Xanax and that she was also um, abused, that she also abused alcohol. Now, leading up to the adversary hearings, do you recall that there the adversary hearing was started and then rescheduled? Yes. Okay. And were you having trouble getting Vanessa Chavez and Jacob Vasquez to drug screen? I was. And in between those two adversary hearing settings, did Jacob Vasquez drug screen? Uh, 
I do not recall. I remember that uh, they were court ordered to drug screen on a specific date. They did not drug screen that specific date. Uh, I believe they went the following day. Um, I just do not recall if Jacob went. Give me a minute. Yeah. Your Honor, at this time, I offer petitioners number 11 in both cases. They are um, drug screen results of Jacob Vasquez, accompanied by a business records affidavit with a 902 notice that went out several months ago. No objection. No objection. No objection. Is this just on 11 in both cases? Yes, Your Honor. All right, 11 is admitted in both cases. Thank you, Your Honor. The department next offers petitioners um, exhibit number 12 in both cases. They are Vanessa Chavez's drug screens accompanied by a business records affidavit and with 902 notice sent out a few months ago. Your Honor, I ask the court to take judicial notice of exhibits 11, hair follicle positive for cocaine for Jacob Vasquez, taken September 29th of 2022. I next ask the court to take judicial notice of Petitioner's exhibit number 12 that includes a positive hair follicle for Vanessa Chavez um, that is it was taken on October 4th of 2022. All right, so noted. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Rudy, at the time of removal, where were the children placed? At the time of the removal, um, baby remained um, in the hospital in the NICU. And then Matthew was in his grandmother's care. And those are maternal grandparents, correct? That is correct. Pass the witness. Mr. Pertle. I have no questions. Mr. Jackson. No questions, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Uh, just briefly, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Flores. Uh, You're muted. I apologize, Your Honor. Yeah, just just briefly, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Flores, uh, your limited contact with Mr. Jones during your investigation, uh, he was fully cooperative with you, wasn't he? Yes, he was. And uh, uh, he was already incarcerated when you began your investigation? That is correct. Had been for, for some time? Correct. So he had no involvement with the reason for the for the investigation and the reason for the removal of the children, correct? Correct. And basically what you'd call a, what, what you'd call a non-offending parent? Correct. So even though he had a considerable criminal background record, um, none of it was related to the incident you were investigating? Correct. Now, he had would you, would you say he and he and his son Matthew were bonded? I don't know. You didn't have that kind of contact to be able to, to observe that. Correct. Do you know whether he had contact, ongoing contact with with uh, with with his son? I do not. He had been incarcerated for quite some time when I visited okay. with him. Okay, so you don't know if he's getting visitation. Correct. Okay. All right. I'll pass the witness, John. All right. Uh, Mr. Ingram. No questions. Uh, Mr. Flores, I read in your report that uh, Matthew Jones is uh, currently incarcerated, and as you just testified to, has been from the beginning of this case, and he is serving a 29-year sentence. Is that correct? Your Honor, I, I'm unaware of the uh, length of his sentence. He was not um, convicted at the time that I met with him. Okay. That is correct, Your Honor. Ms. Gutierrez, is, is that one of the exhibits? Yes, Your Honor, that is, let me go back to my exhibit list over here. I believe that is 6A, the judgment in that okay. capital murder case. Okay, I just wanted to be sure that was on the record. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, does anybody have further questions for Mr. Flores? I have a couple of follow-up questions, Your Honor. Okay. Now, Rudy, if a parent is participating in a drug or criminal lifestyle, does that does that create the possibility that they won't be available as placement in a removal from the other parent? Correct. Okay. And is that what occurred here with Matthew Jones? 
Correct. He was not available to be considered as placement in this removal due to him being incarcerated on pending numerous charges, including capital murder. Is that correct? That is correct. And additionally, because he was in jail, it also means that he could not be an alternative to removing the child. Is that correct? That is correct. Pass the witness. Anyone else have further questions for Mr. Flores? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, then. Um, can Mr. Flores be excused? He can be excused, Your Honor. No objection. Mr. Okay. Flores, thank you for your testimony. I'll remove you so you can go about your day's business. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Gutierrez, I assume your next witness, you can't, we can't conclude your next witness in a matter of about 15 minutes. I don't think that I would be able to, Your Honor. I apologize. Um, no, can we fine. go ahead and bring Mariah Glidewell in? And I think there might be a Sergeant Garay, Garay that's in there too. No, I've got Lisa Galloway, Mariah Glidewell, and Kathy Jones. So, are those all witnesses? No, Your Honor. They might be here for later cases, but if I could have Mariah Glidewell come in, Your Honor, so she's aware of the next reset date. Okay. Then we're going to talk about that as soon as she comes in. All right. So, we're back to... I can't remember what everybody said. Now, what time? Wednesday, Wednesday at 1 or one thirty. Okay. Let's just recess until Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Okay. Right. That works. Okay. We will oh, stand. Judge, uh, yeah. I will, count, I, will, I will make sure I move that, that probate matter. I appreciate it. Somebody else saying something. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, you're saying this for the 27th. I was under the impression it was the 28th. So and I'm oh, if I said the 27th, I meant the 28th Wednesday, this Wednesday, two days from now. Okay, that's the 27th. No, Today. I'm in March. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's the 28th, Joe. <laughs> okay. All right, I got it down for the 28th at 2 o'clock. All right. One o'clock. <laughs> one one o'clock, right? <laughs> one o'clock. Let's all get on the same page here. We're going to start Wednesday, the 28th at 1 o'clock. Yes, right. sir. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, we will stand in recess for those of you involved. I'll be back here in about 10 Ms. minutes. Mr. Gutierrez is with us for the department. Mr. Ingram is with us representing the children. Ms. Naranjo is with us representing the mother. And I need to clarify, I've read something in some of these uh, petitioners' exhibits. It, Ms. Naranjo, is your client's last name Deanda or Deandra? I honestly do not know, Your Honor. I've had no contact with her. Okay, all right. Well, the, the criminal exhibits show her as Deandra. Well, they mentioned her as Deandra, D-E-A-N-D-R-A. And my paperwork shows her as Deanda, D E capital A N D A. So we'll need to clarify that at some point. Okay. I think we're all in Ms. Gutierrez. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I wanted to inform the court that I have checked um, Ms. DeAnda's service on the website, on the clerk's website, Odyssey, and she has not been served, Your Honor. Uh, because of that, combined with Ms. Naranjo's statement that she has not had any contact with her client, I do not believe that we can proceed until we get her served. And okay. I apologize for that, Your Honor. I, I always hope that the parents are going to show up, but it doesn't look like she is here today. Yeah, we can wait another few minutes, just maybe another five minutes to see for sure. But uh, OK, that's fine. If she doesn't show up, then we'll just uh, we'll we'll just reset this case. Your Honor, since we have Ms. Naranjo and Harry here with you, um, we did send an email request for an emergency hearing in the Pantoja case. Um, I'd like to inquire if Ms. Naranjo has seen that email. I have seen the email, but I have not seen the motion. Okay. I apologize. I had a final hearing this morning. I, I thought I had sent my request for it to get filed. I might not have. We will get that filed ASAP. Um, Your Honor, we are asking for that emergency hearing. I've touched base with the child with the ch children's ad litem, Harry Ingram, and he is wanting that hearing to occur as well. Okay. Do we want we've got a break now between now and 1 30? Do we want to slip it in there or do we want to take it after our three o'clock adversary? If we could take it after our three o'clock adversary hearing, Your Honor, if, um, if Ms. Naranjo and Harry are both available, um, I'd I will have to gather all my people together to get to get ready for that hearing. Yeah, right. I'll have to also check with my client to make sure she's available, considering how last minute this is. Okay, I'll set it for three thirty. With we, we our, our three o'clock adversary is a wrapper case. It shouldn't. Do you think it take longer than thirty minutes, Ms. Gutierrez? I believe that it will only take 30 minutes, Your Honor, and I think 3.30 p.m. would be fine. Okay. All right. So this is just an emergency hearing about the Mejia and Martinez children? Um, no, this is 
This hearing particular particular cause number we're talking about is it Pantoja children? That is the case that we are asking for the 3:30 p.m. hearing on. And right. on this particular hearing with Ms. Deanda, whose children are Mejia and Martinez, um, if she doesn't appear in the next few minutes, Your Honor, we're just asking for this to be reset so we can make attempts to serve her again. All right. So what we'll do on this one? I, I, when you said Ms. Naranjo, I thought you meant this case. I, I, Haley, tell me about the 3:30 hearing. So that's fine. Uh, why don't you just notify Haley once that you have service on her and then we'll pick a date. I don't want to just keep bumping it down the road until we know we're ready for a hearing. Okay. Sounds good, Your Honor. Okay. All right, then. Um, we'll give it about five minutes. I don't want to keep y'all much longer. I'll be back here in just a few minutes. And if she's not there, we'll we'll uh, reschedule. Yes, Miss Hodge, you're muted. I just got off the phone with her. She um, said she's downloading the Zoom to get on. Okay. Then we will wait. All right, are we ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. And my client is in agreement. All she's asking is that whoever is assigned to her case help her work on scheduling the appointment so she can miss the least amount of work as possible as she's the sole financial provider for her kids. Okay. All right. So just for the record, then, uh, your client is willing to work the uh, the services. This is a TFF case, a Texas Family First case. She's willing to work the services that's set out in the um, department's petition. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Ingram, are you in agreement? Hello? Sorry, Judge. I'm trying to unmute. Yes, sir, I am in agreement. Okay. All right. Then I will approve that agreement. I will order that Ms. DeAnda work the services as set out in the department's petition. Um, <laughs> Ms. Gutierrez, do you want a compliance hearing? Yes, Your Honor. I think I'm also... We're also asking that the services and the service plan filed on February 23rd, 2024 be ordered as well with these TFF cases, the service plan, and then that's typically included in the order with the initial hearing. All right. And Ms. Ms. Naranjo, your client's willing to work those services? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. All right. How, how far out do you want your compliance hearing? Um, Mercedes and Rachel, how far out do we want a compliance hearing? Two months or three months? Okay, Kathy, how far out do you want this compliance hearing? Two months or three months? Somebody needs to unmute and answer her question. <laughs> three months, three months. Okay, all right. I'll set a compliance hearing for May 20th, 2024. That will be by Zoom, just like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket uh, to see exactly for the department. Mr. Ingram's with us representing the children. We have an alleged father and an unknown father. Uh, the alleged father... Isaiah Carbajal is uh, not with us. He's not in the waiting room. And the mother, Miss Felder, is not in the waiting room. This case was set for 130. It's now a little 133. Uh, we will proceed in the parents and the, the mother and the uh, alleged father's absence. Miss Gutierrez, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. If I may inquire with Melody Zuniga, if either parent returned um, the paperwork to apply for an attorney to the department? We have not been able to make contact with them since removal. Okay. Uh, Brandy Pate was out there this morning trying to find him again. Okay. Poor, I have Brandy Pate, Alexis Venezuela, Michelle Spencer, and Tyler Felty in the waiting room. Um, Brandy Pate is my investigator on the case, if she can be allowed in. Okay. Alexis Zuniga is my second witness, and Ms. Officer Felty is my first witness. Okay. Officer Felty, um, who do you work for? City of Amarillo. And are you a certified police officer? Yes, ma'am. Do you work for Amarillo Police Department? That's correct. Okay. And on June 27, 2023, did you respond to a call regarding Tanika Felder? Yes, ma'am. What was the call out for? Uh, it was for a patient of theirs that had received multiple bruising and also altercation that happened inside the hospital. Okay. And when you arrived at the hospital, did you make contact with Zanika Felder? I did. I think she had her kids with her as well, okay. if I remember correctly. All right. Would that have been Zimitri? Yes. And... Uh, and her other daughter. Okay. And when you made contact with Tanika initially, what did she state had occurred? 
uh, that she was pushed by her boyfriend and had her phone taken away. Did she show you any bruising? I believe she had a bruising on her right arm, and then I think she also had a scratch on her neck. Or... Okay. And did you make contact with Isaiah um, Carvajal as well that day? Yes, I I uh, found him in the ER waiting room with his father. Is that who Tanika identified as the person who had caused these injuries? Yes. And had Tanika also stated that he had taken her phone? Yes, she did. And when you spoke with Mr. Carvajal, were you able to get Tanika's phone back? Yes, I was able to get her phone. She described it. When I first found it, they were arguing about whose phone it was, whether it was his or his father's. But I guess it ended up being hers. He had two other phones on him as well. Now, during your interaction with Mr. Carvajal, what was his demeanor like? Very aggressive from the start and all the way through. He's very confrontational as long as, as well as his father. Now, when you went back to speak with Tanika, how did she describe um, past abuse with him? Very violent, very, she was making statements how he was very emotionally uh, attacking her about talking about her father that passed away and that if uh, she wanted to speak to him, she could send him there somewhere or something on those lines. Now, did she indicate that Mr. Co that Isaiah also was smoking coke and that he gets angry when he does that? Yes, ma'am. And did she also indicate that he gets angry when he's coming down from smoking coke? Yes, that's correct. And did she describe an event on June 24, 2023? Yes. What did she state occurred on June 24, 2023? On June 4, 2023, she said how she got pushed inside the, uh, in her ER room and that her phone got taken. And after I spoke to her later on, she told me about some past incidents where she was uh, choked, pushed up against, uh, I believe it was the wall, a pole, and then had a mirror pushed onto her. And did she indicate that during the attack, she just called up to protect the baby that is 32 weeks and growing? Yes. Did she also, in that conversation with you, describe Isaiah sitting on her chest or sitting on her belly? And on her stomach. Okay, let, let me. Sorry. Talk. That's okay. Did she also describe Isaiah sitting on her stomach and putting his knee on her chest? Yes, ma'am. Did she also describe being sexually by Isaiah? Yes, she did. And did she go on to describe that Isaiah had physically abused her children as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And did she indicate at that time that Isaiah had slapped Dimitri in the face? Yes, ma'am. And did she also indicate that he had hit him with a belt? Uh, I think that was the daughter that got hit in the in the neck and it also busted her lip. Okay. Maybe her it could have been the and could have been the son. I'm not one hundred percent sure which one. Okay, you're breaking up a little bit for me, so I'm gonna re ask part of my question and then let you answer it. Um regarding the daughter, did she also indicate physical abuse towards a daughter? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And was that... Can you hear me? Yes. Was that the discussion where you said that the little girl had been hit on the neck and had a busted lip? Yes, ma'am. And that that was by Isaiah as well. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Now, was Isaiah arrested at the end of this interaction with them? Yes, ma'am. He was. What was he charged with? I think he had a couple warrants, and then he was also for the continued violence and the impeding airway. Now, in regards to the domestic violence, did you complete a Dale packet or intimate partner violence packet with Tanika Felder? Yes, ma'am, I did. Have you had an opportunity to review that before today's hearing?
I did not. That's okay. Um, do you recall that in your incident report, you gave Tanika, or rather Tanika scored a nine out of 10 in the Dale assessment? Yes, I do remember it being rather high. And did she, what is the, can you explain what the significance of scoring nine out of 10 in a Dale assessment means to you? Just that the other party's subject and is more likely to assault again. Does it also indicate a higher possibility of lethality for the victim? Yes, ma'am. Pass the witness. All right, Ms. Stringer. No questions. All right. Anything further of uh, Officer Felty? No, Your Honor. May he be excused? No objection. Okay. Officer Felty, thank you for your testimony and thank you for your service. I'll remove you so you can go about your afternoon's business. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. We offered thank Petitioner's you. Exhibit 1, the incident report um, regarding the incident Officer Felty just testified to as evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. The department next calls Alexis Valenzuela as its witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Alexis, who do you work for? I work for the Department of Family and Protective Services. And what do you do for them? I'm an investigator with the department. And back in June of 2023, did you attend the child, um, I'm sorry, the bridge interviews of Zahora and Zimitri? I did. Okay. And did that occur on June 30th of 2023? It did. Are Zahora and Zimitri both the older children of Tanika Felder? Yes. Thank you. Now, during that bridge or forensic interview, what outcries did Zorora make regarding Isaiah Carbajal? Zorora talked about having um, a bruise because of her dad, and she identified her dad as, as Isaiah. Um, she talked about being spanked whenever she pees herself. Um, she talked about being spanked by a belt because she was moving around in her bed. Um, and then she talked about um, being hit by the metal side of the belt. And did you also witness the interview of Zimitri by a forensic interviewer? I did. And was that also on June 30th of 2023? Yes, ma'am. And what outcries did Zimitri make during that interview? Uh, Zimitri spoke about, um, I'd say, a couple incidents of what we would consider domestic violence. Um, he talked about one incident where um, Isaiah poured beer on his mom, um, where he was slapped by Isaiah. He also talked about being choked by him. He was able to describe um, how Isaiah's hands were around his neck and how he was up in the air. Um, he talked about an incident where Isaiah poured beer on him. He also mentioned an incident where Isaiah slapped his sister and, and broke a glass cup on her head. Um, and that he, or that his dad, Isaiah had um, hit her with the belt as well. Okay. Now, eventually later on in the investigation, Zorora and Dimitri were both removed. Is that correct? Yes. They were removed out of a different County. The family had moved. So we had to transfer the case. Okay. Thank you. Um, Your Honor, we ask that the court take judicial notice of that separate legal case now transferred to Randall County, Aurora and Dimitri. All right, so noted. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. And I pass the witness. Okay. Mr. Ingram? No questions. All right. Uh, Ms. Gutierrez, anything further of Ms. Valenzuela? No, Your Honor. We ask that she be released. Okay. All right. Then, Ms. Valenzuela, thank you for your testimony. I'll remove you so you can go about your afternoon's business. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Gutierrez, next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Is Rachel Peoples in the waiting room? Uh, let me check. Let me get out okay. of this thing. Thank you. No, I don't have anyone in the waiting room now. Okay, that's fine. I will proceed with Brandy Pate. Thank you, Your Honor. Who do you work for, Brandy? Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. And what do you do for them? I'm an investigator. And how, did you um, receive an intake on Tanika Felder? Yes. And was that received on January 20th of 2024 by the department? It was The first one was received on January 10th, 2024. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. Now, was the child in the intake there? Yes. 
And are his parents identified as Tanika Felder and Isaiah Scarabajal? Yes. What were those intake allegations? Uh, the intake was concerning uh, Mr. Carbajal and Ms. Felder getting back together into a relationship um, and having Ziari in their care. Due, and the concerns were drug use and domestic violence. Okay. And so to your knowledge, Tanika Felder had a history of cocaine use. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Your Honor, at this time, we offer petitioners exhibit number two. It is a positive drug screen result accompanied by a business records affidavit 90210 notice that was sent out um, at least 14 days before the hearing. Now, Brandy, when you received the intake, did you go ahead and make contact with Tanika Felder and Isaiah Scarabaja? Yes, on January 12th, I did. Okay. And when confronted about uh, the concerns with drug use, did Mr. Carvajal indicate his last use of cocaine was two months ago? Yes, that's what he told me. Okay. And did Miss Miss Felder admit that she was aware that Mr. Carvajal had been using cocaine in the past? Yes. Now, um, did they also indicate that domestic violence was in the past as well? Yes, they uh, both admitted to domestic violence in the past. Um, Mr. Carvajal talked about a time a few weeks prior to that where the police were called to their house due to them arguing. Now, is it your understanding that they were residing there together at the home that you were visiting them at? Yes. Now, as a part of your investigation, did you ask Ms. Felder and Mr. Carvajal to drug screen? Yes, I did. I asked them that day. Okay. And do you recall what days they went to drug screen? Um, Ms. Felder went the next day, which I believe is on a Saturday, and Mr. Carbajal went the following Monday. Okay. Your Honor, I next offer petitioner's exhibit number three, and that is a, sorry, it is a negative UA, but a positive hair follicle accompanied by a business records affidavit and with 902 notice sent out the day we filed the case, I believe. Your Honor, we next offer petitioner's exhibit number four. It is a positive hair follicle, I'm sorry, urinalysis drug screen of Isaiah Carbajal collected on January 30th of 2024. Your Honor. Now, Brandy, both those drug screens, um, or both Mr. Carbajal and Ms. Felders had positive drug screens for cocaine. Is that correct? The drug test that I sent them for, uh, Ms. Felders was negative. It was a UA. And Mr. Carbajal's was a dilute negative. Okay. So if she tested positive on a urinalysis on January 25th, 2024, that's not the one that you sent her for. Is that correct? That's correct. That's the one St. Francis sent her for. Okay. So she was drug testing as a part of her ongoing CPA's case with her older children. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But at this point, in the case, after receiving those results, you realized that both parents were using cocaine. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, now, in the other CPS case with Ms. Felder's older kids, was she working services? According to the records I got from St. Francis, um, Ms. Felder had started some services, but also there were no services on several of her tasks. And then on January 30th of 2024, you spoke with Ms. Felder and Mr. Carvajal regarding Ms. Felder's positive drug screen. Is that correct? Yes. And did she claim that if she was next to somebody smoking cocaine? Yes, that's correct. She told me she was around a cousin that had been using it. Okay. And is that the day you sent Mr. Carvajal to hair follicle drug screen? Yes. Okay. And did he also your analysis drug screen? Yes, ma'am. I apologize. I may have gotten these mixed up. Um, so did he ever hair follicle drug screen for you? Or did he only yes. hair drug screen? So he did hair follicle drug screen. He, he, he completed both. Okay. All right. Now, as far as the reasonable efforts to prevent removal, um, was it a great concern for the department 
that even with an ongoing separate removal case for her older children, that Ms. Felder was also testing positive for cocaine. Yes. Did it cause you great concern that she was back with Mr. Carvajal, who played a part in the removal of her older children? Yes. And was it of great concern that he likewise tested positive for cocaine? Yes. <laughs> so in order to kick out one of the parents from the home would not have ensured the child's safety as both parents were perpetrators. Is that correct? That is correct. Additionally, if there is an ongoing removal case with the older children, that way in favor of, of deciding that kick out order would not have ensured the safety either. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. As well, a parent child safety placement would not have ensured the safety of the child due to both parents actively using drugs during an open, open legal case with Ms. Felder's older children. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, since, um, since the removal out of concern for exposure for the child, did the doctor order drug screens for the child? Yes, uh, a hair strand was ordered for Ziari. Okay, and were the results concerning? Very concerning, yes. Can you please explain? Uh, his levels of his hair strand were extremely high. His cocaine metabolite was 795,316. That was the highest of, of, the, <laughs> of the level. And after receiving those drug screen results, did we request that the baby return to the doctor's office <laughs> to be evaluated again? Yes, he has a doctor's appointment tomorrow afternoon with the same doctor and uh, lab work will be done to check his liver. And was the child removed for his physical safety? Yes. And did the circumstances at that time, um, did they cause you to determine that the child was in immediate danger if left with his parents? Yes. Pass the witness. Mr. Ingram? No questions. All right. Anything further of this witness, Ms. Gutierrez? Not of this witness, Your Honor. I have one more. Okay, you want to leave her in? You want to leave Ms. Pate in with us? Yes, if Ms. Pate could stay, please. And I call Rachel Peoples as my next witness. Okay, let's get her in. While we're waiting for her, Ms. Pate, do, do you know where uh, the child is placed, either the type of facility in either city or county? He is placed with his paternal grandmother, Christy Duenas, and she lives in should I swear? Thank you, Your Honor. Hi, Rachel. Who do you work for? St. Francis Ministries. And what do you do for them? I'm a permanency specialist. And if the judge grants the department um, being named temporary managing conservator in today's hearing, will that make you the permanency caseworker for this family? Yes. And as the future permanency worker, did you attempt to make contact with Mr. Carvajal and Ms. Felter? Yes. And... Were you able to see them in person at any point? I was. Okay. And do you recall the date? February 22nd. Now, what statements did Tanika Felder make about her and Isaiah's drug use? That Tanika told me that she was using cocaine, taking bumps off of a key. And that Isaiah was smoking, he was smoking the cocaine um, and he was smoking crack because he mixed it with baking soda. In the house. Okay. Do you think that that would have some, some effect on the child's drug screen being so high? Yes. Now, you said Ms. Felder told you she is taking bumps off of a key. Can you give us an explanation as to what that means to you? I'm going to assume it means snorting it off of the key. Pass the witness. Ms. Stringer? No questions. Anything further, Ms. Peoples? Nothing further, Your Honor. Do you want her uh, left in? She can stay in, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Any further witnesses, Ms. Gutierrez? No further witnesses, Your Honor. The department rests. We ask that both Mr. Carvajal and Ms. Felder be ordered to drug screen. Um, Brandy, am I correct that we just need your analysis drug screens or do we need hair follicle drug screens as well? Uh, probably both. 
Okay, Your Honor, we ask that both parents be ordered to hair follicle and UA drug screen. Okay. All right. All right, then, if you have no further witnesses, Mr. Ingram, did you have witnesses? No witnesses. All right. Mr. Ingram, recommendations? I recommend that the department be named as temporary managing conservator placement to remain as is. Okay. All right, then, based on the evidence I've heard today, I will continue the department's temporary managing conservator, continue ZR's current placement. I'll order both Ms. Felder and Mr. Carbajal to both do hair strand and UA drug screen by 4 p.m. tomorrow, uh, February 27th at uh, Care Express in Amarillo. I will set the status hearing in this case for March 25th, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or two in advance to see exactly what time that hearing will take place. I do also find that the department made reasonable efforts not to remove these children by offering services to Ms. Felder uh, in the CPS case that's been testified to involving her older two children. An adversary hearing. Okay, uh, Ms. Gutierrez is with us for the department. Involved. Mr. Ingram's with us representing the children. The uh, mother, Ms. Quintanilla, is not with us. The father, Mr. Stevenson, is not with us. This case was set for three o'clock. It's now a little bit about 3.03. I have... Uh, Kay Larson, Tamara Martinez, and Melody Zuniga in the waiting room. Just get all be let in, please, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. All right, then. Okay, then, Ms. Gutierrez, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I just saw an order appointing attorney Stacy Grant come yeah, through. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Haley, if we could try to locate. I just Stacey. texted her, and I had an email from her secretary earlier about this hearing, so she should be here. Okay, we'll give it a minute. We've got please a little bit of time for the next hearing. hearing so. Ms. Gutierrez is with us. Mr. Ingram's with us. Now Mr. Stevenson is with us and his attorney, Ms. Grant, is with us. Uh, the mother, Ms. Quintanilla, is still not with us. Again, this case was set for 3 o'clock. It's 3.06. We will proceed in the mother's absence. Ms. Uh, Gutierrez, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to start off by informing the court that the mother signed a relinquishment of parental rights, an irrevocable relinquishment of parental rights. I ask that the court take judicial notice of that filed on February 22nd of 2024. Okay, so noted. Are you asking that I go ahead and enter an uh, interlocutory termination today? Yes, Your Honor. I sent a message to Harry Ingram and an email to Ms. Grant. I did not hear back from them. If they have an objection, I can hold off and just schedule a separate hearing. Okay, we'll see. Okay. Um, then your witness, please. Thank you, Your Honor. The department calls Katie Larson. Okay. Katie, who do you work for? Uh, the Department of Family and Protective <laughs> Services. And what do you do for them? I am an investigator. Okay. And Your Honor, I forgot to inquire with Ms. Grant and Mr. Ingram if the um, adversary hearing portion in general is agreed to. Do I need to put anybody in a, wait out, in a, in a breakout room? Your Honor, I have been able to, prior to coming in here, have conversations with my client. This is basically going to be a wrapper case, and my client is not contesting any adversarial issues today and agrees to work any services on his part that might be deemed necessary by the department. Okay, that might short circuit things then today. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll focus my questioning then on um, on the mother, Ms. Quintanilla. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Katie, when did the department receive the intake regarding Christian? It was on February the 6th. Is that of 2024? Yes. And what is his date of birth? His birthday is 2008. And who is his father? Uh, Troy Stevenson. And who is his mother? Uh, Natasha Quintanella. Okay. And the department received the intake on um, February 6th of 2024. Is that correct? Yes. What were those intake allegations? Um, the intake stated that Christian was having a mental health crisis, um, that he had been having suicidal and homicidal threats towards uh, killing his stepmother, Sarah, and um, that he did have a pocket knife and planned to use it to harm her and would harm his sisters um, if he had to stay. And so he was taken to the pavilion uh, and placed under an emergency detention order. Okay. And did you make contact with Mr. Stevenson during your investigation? Yes. And did he confirm the allegations in the intake regarding um, the homicidal and suicidal feelings of Christian? Yes. 
Okay. Um, did he also indicate that Christian had claimed to have actually poisoned or attempted to poison his stepmother's drink? Yes. Okay. And has um, Mr. Stevenson and his and the stepmother worked with the department before to get services for Christian? They did. And immediately prior to the removal, was the child also receiving mental, um, I'm sorry, individual therapy as well? Yes. So it sounds like Mr. Mr. Stevenson and his family were doing everything they could um, to help Christian. Is that an accurate statement? Yes. Now, regarding Ms. Quintanilla, um, when you gave her a call, was that on February 12th of 2024? Yes. And what did she state regarding her son, Christian? She said she hadn't uh, talked to him in over two years. Did she indicate whether or not he would be able to return to her home as an alternative to removal? She stated he could not return to her home. Okay. And was a family team meeting held? Yes. And what concerning statements did Ms. Quintanilla make during that family team meeting? Uh, she stated that um, she wasn't willing to take Christian. Her adult son is 19 years old and lives in the home. That child or adult she abused Christian several years ago. And she wasn't willing to find him somewhere else to live so she could take custody of Christian. And she said she had no friends or family willing to take him. And how did she end up or when did she tell you she wanted to relinquish her parental rights? Um, what date was the relinquishment filed, Teresa? The 22nd. It, it was on the 21st. Okay. And what statements did she make to you about that relinquishment? She stated that she just couldn't keep doing this with CPS, that she didn't want to be involved with us and that, um, she felt it would be better for everybody, um, since she hasn't seen Christian, if she just relinquished her rights. Okay. Um, during your investigation, did you inform Ms. Quintanilla that if the child was removed, that we would want to work services with her so the child could reunify with her? Yes. Okay. So we offered services to her, correct? Yes. And she denied those, correct? Yes. Okay. Has the child been informed that his mother has relinquished her rights? Um, I am not sure on that, Teresa. We did discuss that and we, they were going to discuss that with Harry and Andy. So I don't know what they decided. Okay. So that may be something that Harry addresses in his announcement later. Is that correct? Yes. Do you believe it's in the child's best interest that Ms. Quintanilla's parental rights be terminated to him based off her relinquishment? Yes. Can you please explain why? Um, she's really never had any kind of relationship or custody of Christian. And during the few months that she did have him, he was abused in her home. And since then she has chosen to not have any contact with him, um, or try to repair any damage that was done during the time where he was abused at her home.